Hello, my name is Russell Singer with the Avaya Serviceability Engineering Team. This video will demonstrate how to configure syslog, otherwise known as remote logging, for your Avaya desktop video device. To access the login configuration on the ADVD, you can do this from the user interface by accessing the settings application from the application fan on the left. Then we'll go into the administrator options. And here we'll enter our password of 27238, which is the default password. Uh, then we'll access the option that says log. And this is where we configure both the remote logging and then also the logging categories. First, we're going to access the log categories, which is where we'll ensure that all of the services that we want to be logged are indeed enabled. And by default, all of these services are enabled. But in the case that you're working with an engineer and they ask you to only enable a specific log category, then this is where you would come to do that. But in our case, we want all of these categories to be generating logs, so we'll leave it as the default, and we'll go back to the log menu. Now that we've ensured our log categories are enabled, we're ready to configure syslog on the ADVD, which is also known as remote logging when you look at, at the user interface here. So we'll select the option for remote logging. That will take us to the syslog configuration menu. We need to configure both the log level and the log server address. The log server address being the IP address or host name of the syslog server that will be capturing these logs sent from the ADVD. So we'll go ahead and enable remote logging first and then we'll configure these two settings. Now the log level is by default set to not a very verbose level of logging. So it's by default set to warnings as you see there on the screen. We typically, if we're going to be capturing information or any useful information from the ADVD, we want to set that to at least the information level of logging. And if you're working with an engineer who is doing advanced debugging on the ADVD, then it may actually be required to set that to a debug level. So that's what I'll go ahead and do here just so you'll see uh, how verbose some of those log entries can be. So first of all, we'll change the log level to debug. Then we'll go back and we'll change the log server address to the IP address of our syslog server. And this is just a Windows uh, syslog server that I have set up and running. I'm using a, a a trial version of Kiwi syslog, which is available to the public for free. So we'll set the IP address there and click Save. As soon as I change the IP address, the ADVD will begin to send its log entries to the new IP address without the need to restart that service. So at this point, we're ready to go look at our syslog server and see what log entries are being sent to it. Here we're looking at my Kiwi syslog server that is running on my Windows PC. And briefly, I would just like to give you an overview of the format of these messages that you'll be receiving via syslog from the ADVD. Uh, first of all, in this window, you'll notice there are two different timestamps. One is the date and time that the message was received. That's on the left. This is the actual date and time on my PC that the message was received. The second timestamp is actually in the message itself, and this is the timestamp that comes from the ADVD when the log message was generated on the ADVD. So that's why they're a little bit different. Uh, in most cases, they'll be fairly close depending on whether or not your network has a network time protocol or NTP set up. Uh, the other thing here you'll notice is the priority. This is the priority that we configured on the ADVD itself when we set the log level to debug. Remember, originally it was set for warnings. So most of the messages that you'll see the ADVD generate will be either info or debug level. Again, for most cases, it may be sufficient to set the information level, in which case you would only see the info messages appear on your syslog server. But in the case that you're working with an engineer who asks you to set the debug level on your ADVD, you would also see the debug level priority messages show up here in your syslog server. 
And then of course you have the host name. This is the IP address or fully qualified domain name of the device that generated the message and sent it to the syslog server. And then on the right you have the message itself, which can contain many different things. One important item of note is that the message does contain the log category that the that generated the message. So in the case here, you see things like script data, uh, you may see uh, PPM or telephony, various other services that are listed as log categories appear there. Now keep in mind that because syslog is an unreliable transport method for log uh, data, there's no way for the ADVD to verify that the far end has received the log entries. So if there's any kind of a network interruption or if the far end server has some type of firewall that is blocking syslog messages, then there's no way for the ADVD to know that and those messages are forever lost. Unless you also have local logging configured, in which case they're stored locally on the ADVD as well. And that's really all there is to configuring syslog on the ADVD. Thank you for your time today. We hope this information was useful. We welcome your comments, questions, and feedback at mentor at avaya.com or on Twitter at avaya mentor. Thank you for choosing Avaya.